Hello, it's Otakano here. Today, I want to share with you my five tips on how to put together your own transparent watercolor palette. Before I get started, I want to apologize for my voice. I am just starting to recover from a bronchitis that had me bedridden for 10 days, so it's still a bit rough around the edges. I'm hoping it will come back to me very soon, but thank you for your patience in the meantime. Let's get started with the transparent watercolour palette. When you're starting out with watercolour, I don't think it's necessary for you to worry about transparent and opaque paint. However, if you have been doing watercolour painting for a while, you probably started getting into trying out different techniques, and some techniques, such as using lots of layers, can struggle if you are using colours of different opacity. For example, here's a piece I painted with three transparent colours. You can see all the lovely layers and details underneath. The colours also mix beautifully with each other. Here's another piece using the same layering technique but with one transparent and two opaque colours. Opaque colours not only obscure the layers underneath but it also lifts much easier. This means when you put a new layer of paint down, the previous layer likes to re-wet fast and mix with the new layer, resulting in muddy colours. So if you are interested in using techniques that require transparent paint, it's the perfect time for you to put together your transparent watercolour palette and I have some tips for you. Tip number one, know what you want. Before we even take a look at Yummy Paints, we have to decide on what you want from your palette. Do you want an all-rounder palette? Or one for landscape, animals, or perhaps portraits? What you are going to use the palette for will influence what colours you should have in your palette. For my own palette, I want an all-rounder that has all the colours of the colour wheel, plus some extra colours I've come to really love. I also want them to be super transparent colours, just so that I don't end up making a mess again. Tip number two, brand matter. Here I don't mean the more expensive a brand, the better it's going to be. What I mean is even if the paints have the same name with the same pigment, the processing method each brand uses can hugely affect its opacity. For example, if we take Naples yellow, Holbein classifies theirs as transparent, Daniel Smith classifies it as semi-transparent, Core, which is made by Golden, classifies theirs as semi-opaque, and Winsor Newton, Schmincke and Sennelier all classify their Naples yellow as opaque. It's a bit of a mixed bag, so it is important that when you see recommendations for transparent or opaque paints, you need to also find out the brand they are referring to. Tip number three, test, test, test. Following on from thinking about brands, another thing to know is, in my experience, the transparency opacity rating the brands give you don't seem all that accurate. They don't seem to be a industry standard for classifying the opacity of a paint, so each brand just do their own thing. And even within brands, they don't seem all that consistent a lot of the time. On top of that, we all have our own sense of what is transparent and what is not. Testing transparency is very easy. You draw a black sharpie line on some watercolour paper. Then you swatch each colour and let it dry. Once dry, if the black line under the paint seems pretty much the same as before, then the paint is transparent. If the black line looks lighter and you can see the pigment on top of the lines, then the paint has some opacity to it. Tip number four, start with quinacridones and thalos. Having said each brand is different, on the whole, quinacridones and thalos tend to be good transparent watercolors. The quinacridone colors can start from orange to reds to beautiful pinks through to purples. The thalo colors will cover you from blues to turquoise to greens. So from just these two kinds of paints, you'll get 90% of your colour palette sorted. That's great coverage. It just leaves you to find your favourite transparent yellows, violets and yellow greens. One thing to note though is that quinacridones and thalo colours are really intensely bright. This is perfect for what I'm looking for, but if you're looking for a more muted palette, such as for landscapes, you will probably want to avoid these. 
Tip number five. If two colors are close, test by color mixing and trying out techniques. If you are a paint holder like me, you will probably have multiple colors that are very similar. Some people might want all the possible colors to be in their palette, but I like to keep my palette as streamlined as possible. However, it can be really hard to pick between two beautiful colors. One way I deal with this admittedly pleasurable difficulty is to mix the two colors with other colors you know you want to have in the palette and frequently mix with. For example, I couldn't decide between indigo and Antwerp blue. They kind of serve the same function in my palette, so I didn't really want to have both. So I mixed the two colors with quinacridone gold and quinacridone rose. It turned out that when mixed with quinacridone gold, Antwerp blue makes a much nicer, brighter green than indigo does. Another thing I want to make sure was that for all the colors I selected from the color wheel, there was a color that was its true complement. That is to say that two colors will gray out properly. So even though ultramarine violet and ultramarine blue aren't super duper transparent, I decided to have them in my palette as they neutralize perfectly with my permanent yellow light and permanent yellow orange. This is where knowing what you want your palette to do comes in really handy. Similarly, if you have particular techniques you know you'll want to use a lot with the palette, it's good to test the technique on the colors. You may find that the technique works much better on one color than the other. For example, I knew I wanted to be able to make blooms in a paint by dropping water onto them. So I tested the blooming technique with two pairs of colors I wasn't sure of to make certain that they were all bloomed nicely with water. I will be uploading a video of the transparent watercolor palette I put together in the next day or so, so you can watch me fill my palette and color swatch all the paints. I'll be sure to include the brands of each paint for you. Now that you have all five of my tips in putting together your transparent watercolor palette, I hope you have lots of fun picking what color to have in your palette. If you have any questions about putting together your transparent palette, please ask away in the comment. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.